Aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful for who he is? Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Raise up the thankfulness, the thankful heart. Thankful heart. Thank you, Lord. For who you are, for who you are. Yeah. Who you are, who you are. Yeah. Who you are, who you presence right now. Just wait. Be still and know. delighting over us right now. Just let him like you. Just let him like you right now. Because he does. He does. More than anyone else in the whole planet. He likes you. Just let him delight on you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He's smiling over you. There's not a frown on his face when he looks at you. He's smiling over you. Lord, you like us. You really like us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
just take a seat and stay in this atmosphere right now. Just stay in this moment. We want to take of the Lord's table together right now. As the ushers bring the elements around, if you prefer gluten-free, grab the cracker instead of the bread. Lord, we thank you for the power of your blood that speaks a better word. (laughs) It calls out our name. Yeah. Yeah. We just receive. When you come to this table, it's already prepared. No work to be done, because the work's already been done. He said it is finished. Yeah. Lord, there is no greater statement of our value and worth to you than what we are holding in our hands right here. The body and the blood of Jesus. There is no greater statement of our worth, of our significance. Your cross shouts our significance. It shouts our worth. Your cross put up on a highway many people could see it and you did that on purpose it wasn't meant to be hidden it wasn't meant to be on the back streets it was out in the open because you were shouting and declaring your value of us you said we're worth it we're worth it As we take today, let this reinforce to you that this is for you and that it is for now. Yep. This table right here, the table of the Lord, declares it is for you and it is for now. There's no distance anymore. There's no delay anymore. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Thank you. There are angels 
of activation in the room right now? (laughs) I've never seen that before. There are angels of activation. What they are doing as we eat and as we drink of Him, what they're doing is they're activating the promises of God within you. They're activating things that the Lord has spoken over you prophetically. Because now's the time. There's no more delay. Man, God is just on it. There is no more delay. The faith of the Son of God within you is coming up with such strength and boldness that you will take him at his word. And the reason why this is, is so is simply because of what you're holding. The body and the blood. It's not something you did. It's something he did. So Lord, thank you for your body given for us that by this body we can be whole people. Whole people. Yeah. Whole inside, whole outside. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your body given for us. As we eat, we declare your body, my body. Go ahead and eat. your wholeness tastes good. (laughs) Thank you. And now for the blood. Lord, your blood has switched us over to a different bloodline, a different family, and a different DNA. Within our DNA, there's now a golden strand. It is the strand of God within. And we thank you for the activation we're receiving from you right now through your angels. Activation into promise. Into manifestation. Into fulfillment. Into fullness. Overflow. Thank you that all this is by the power of the blood. Go ahead and drink. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to just open it up right now to anybody who senses that the Lord's speaking a prophetic word over us this morning, and that it's not just for you, it's for the whole body, and that it lines up with the word of God. We're not looking for a testimony, we're not looking for a mini sermon. So, yeah, we got a few hands over here, so that's good. I heard the Lord say this morning, get familiar with your weapons. <laughs> Amen. When a soldier goes into battle, he can have a whole arsenal of weapons at his disposal. But if he doesn't know how to use those weapons, it's not going to do him a bit of good. So God said, get familiar with your weapons. The weapons I have placed within your hand have been proven, have been tried in battle. They've never failed. So get to know your weapons and get familiar on how to use those weapons because if you leave those weapons dormant, they're not going to accomplish anything in the battle. So pick up your weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
Lord showed me, when I was praying in the spirit, the Lord showed me there was going to be a great war on the whole world. Lucifer was rising up to do war on the whole world. His time, had, his time is coming in. And we are supposed to stand firm and stand. Mm -hmm. Above all things, stand. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Oh, and I have a word for you. Okay. The Lord showed me you have a, a horn, like a, the, the unicorn in the scripture, the one horn. Remember mm. in the word? And it represents Yeshua HaMashiach. Man, it's big on you. You you were you were standing in you were standing for him a hundred percent. it's it's on you. I can see it spiritually. It's awesome. Okay. Thank you. I'll try not to whack anybody with it. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um when we were singing, um, there was a line in one of the songs that says, You shine in the shadows. And as we sang this verse, I saw a desert landscape. Um, and it was mostly in shadows. But as I drove through the desert, I turned a corner, and the shadows gradually went away. As they did, the glory of God revealed itself in a carpet of color that covered the hills in a desert spring bloom. I asked, what did this mean? God said, I'm taking you into a time of flourishing and new growth. Stay on the path, and greater glories will be revealed and brought to fruition. Just like a desert spring bloom, it only comes when the time and conditions are right, and the conditions are right. <laughs> That's <is> so cool. <laughs> okay, all right, oh man. <laughs> okay, as we were worshiping, the Lord said, the battle is mine, it's not yours. Yep. And the Lord said, as you wait upon me, you will begin to decree my word. And I say unto you that my word will never fail. It will never fall. I say unto you that as you speak the uh, blood to cover, that life is in the blood. Mm -hmm. And I say unto you that as you direct your prayers, as you direct your words, as you decree my blood, that life will begin to flow into that thing for the battle is mine. It has never been yours. It never will be yours. For I say unto you that you have uh, everything that yes. I have. Yep. You have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And as you speak, the angels of God will begin to take that word and go forth and minister that word. For I say unto mm -hmm. you that it's my word. It's my word. It will never fail. It will never, ever fall. And I say, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. For I will do what I said I will mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Two more. So um, in that moment of just sitting in the presence of God that Pastor Dan led us to, I just heard the Lord. He showed me a, like a musical staff just kind of waving over us and gave me the line, um, I'm singing over you songs of deliverance. Yeah, okay. Well, boy, this just keeps flowing. Where, where did I see that hand? Yeah, Cheryl, or was it? I don't remember. Anyway, we'll make it work. As we were singing, um, I really saw the King of Glory. I saw Jesus mm -hmm. on a white horse, mm -hmm. and and I was trying to find the verse in Revelations, and I couldn't find the right one. But then the Lord gave me this: "The King is coming," in Psalms 24. So wake up, you living gateways! Lift up your heads, you doorways of eternity! Welcome the king of glory, mm -hmm. for he is about to come through you. You ask who is the king of glory? Yahweh, armed and ready for battle. Yahweh, invincible in every way. So <laughs> wake up, you living gateways, and rejoice. Fling wide, you eternal doors. Here he comes, the king of glory. He is ready to come in. 
You ask who is the king of glory? He is Yahweh, armed and ready for battle, the mighty one, the invincible commander of heaven's host. Yes, he is the king of glory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Did you have your hand up? I did, but you said two. Uh -oh. Timothy. Okay, two more, and then we'll call it good. Okay. So, I saw when I was in prayer, um, the Lord saying, "I am the vine," and this is a season where our old ways are not going to work for the harvest God's That's bringing right. in, and that we, He has to sever us to fill his life-given sap. And if anybody's ever seen the way that they prune um, grape bushes, if you have all these suckling ones on there, you're going to have a small bundles. But if you cut off all those suckling ones that yeah. are not bearing fruit, all the fruit of Christ is going to go into the major ones. And so there's some branches that have been attaching themselves to the Lord as the, of our old ways that are not going to be working in the new thing that I mm -hmm. do. And we need to be cut at the end of ourself to be tapped into the sap that Christ has for this end time harvest. So what worked for us in the last season is not going to work for us in this season. Yeah. And so we have to be available to be able to change, to let our own ways, our own thoughts go, because the greater thing is he's going to teach us, and he's going to stretch us and increase us to include these sheep that he's bringing in, these hungry ones. They, they don't have to perform. They don't have to... They are yearning and hungry, and God is stinking us out there, and there is more Christ in some of those out in the streets than there are in the buildings, and it should not be. And those he's bringing into you, they are hungry for him. They're yearning yeah. for him, and they're receptive to him. And it's going to be through the love and the compassion of Christ in us. It's not the behavioral. It's not the – none of that is here. It's the love of God for his people that's yeah. going to touch the hearts of them. And so that's the grafting. That's the cutting off of the old until nothing but Christ's love is shining through us for his people. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> okay. The icing on the cake. <laughs> this is my brother and friend and fellow labor in for close to 40 years and his wife incredible apostolic prophet and prophetic teacher, great ministry. They've paid the price greatly and loved Jesus and been faithful along the way. I want to introduce them to you. He's got a word from God that told, the Lord told me he did. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I think we should honor those that God brings among us that are governmental in their offices. Yeah. They're proven, tested, tried. And uh, I just am blessed by him being here. Thank you for this moment to be able to, uh, there's prophecy that every saint can do, and then there's apostolic prophets that speak to the entire region and to nations and to peoples, and they shift things. Yeah. So I want you to welcome Stuart Lawson. All right. The Lord says, I look around the room and I don't see old people coming to a place to die in peace. I see the fires of God that have burned in the past. You're the embers. You've been in some of the biggest battles and the biggest spiritual warfare. You have fought the fight. I have not brought you here to rest in this pastor's peace. But I brought you here to build a fire that the embers would come together. Yeah. And a fire draws varmints. There's one thing that I've taught for years. If you want to see where a move of God is, okay, you'll see that where there is wolves in the crowd. Why? Wolves are attracted to blood. And when you preach the blood of Jesus, the crowds will come. Don't be surprised when the wolves show up. You have to have the embers of the past who've been experienced, who knows how to fight, who knows what a fire should look like. They've been the fire. They're not burnt out, but they are the collective fire of God that it's here. This is to you this day. You're not in a pace of peace. I don't want to discourage you, but you've come to a war camp. 
<laughs> All I have to say is, this is to you, this people, at this time. You're only going to accomplish what God wants as you come together. And my amber puts with your amber and creates a brighter fire. Amen. And that fire is going to draw the varmints. You need to be prepared for that. His leadership has got to be strong, have discernment, have knowledge. They have got to know that what is a misguided person and a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah. They have to know what is a spiritual gift and the ego. Yeah. They can't crush the gift to control the ego. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome anytime. All right. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. These words demand a response. You will. You will. Will anybody else? Will anyone else take up your weapon, stand firm, stay in the fight, burn, burn, burn for Jesus, burn, be a burning one. We will, Lord. We say, let's all say it together. We will. We will, Lord. We'll burn for you. We'll stand. God, no matter what comes, we stand. Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We love you. You're worth it all. You're worth it all. Yeah. Yeah, take a seat. <laughs> oh, man, this is crazy. This is so fun. This is so fun. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Wow. Man, this is just week two. Man. Holy smokes. Man. Whew. All right, as an act of our continued worship, let's take an offering right now. And as the baskets come by, just drop that offering in there. And thank you for your obedience to give the Lord the first and the best. Here's the deal I know that there's no one in this room who's the source for this church. Not one of us. God is the source of this church just as much as He's the source for your life Amen. and your home. Okay? But we have an act of obedience to do where we give Him the first and the best. And that's what we do right now. And this is, this is actually one of the most exciting times for me. I love it. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And you've experienced it. When, when it's Christmas morning and your kid's unwrapping that present that you've been holding on to for maybe a month or two, and you're just, all right, here it is. I'm so excited. You're more excited for them to open your present than you are to open yours, you know? And that's the, that's the heart of God. That's the heart of God. He's more, he's excited about giving. So when you give, his excitement flows into you too. And the joy, the cheerfulness, right? Cheerfulness. Where do you think a cheerful giver comes from? It's not from right here. It's not from ourselves. It's from him. The cheerfulness that he has in giving becomes your cheerfulness. <laughs> so, oh. so, you know, it, it, if, uh, it'll be understandable if you laugh as you drop your offering in the basket. You know, like, woo-hoo-hoo, I love this, ha-ha! Here we go. Thank you, Lord. So, yeah. Yeah, and you can expect more, more than what was given. You can expect it every time. So, 
It doesn't matter how much it is. You can expect more. <laughs> so, thank you, Lord, for taking what we're giving. We declare it's yours. Do with it what you want. In your name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, this, this morning we have... Oh, you, you already got a lot. There's more. So, so, you know, if you're already feeling full, you're going to have to make more room. Okay? So uh, we have Sister Joan Pierce with us today. And for those of you who don't know, she uh, has functioned as an evangelist for a long time, but the Lord has shifted her into an apostolic because she's going, she is traveling all over the place, bringing the power and the message of God to his church all over the place, lighting fires everywhere she goes. Amen. Okay, she's shifting culture. Yes. That's, apostles do that. That's, yes. they, they set heavenly culture in a place, in a region, over the church, over the, the whole atmosphere. They, they set heaven in that place. That's what they do, okay? Through intercession, but especially through love. Especially through love. So, Joan, thank you for coming, for being here. Thank you. Can we welcome Joan? Huh? Hallelujah. Um, I'm so excited about being here, but I'm excited about being anywhere. You know, when I first came to know Christ, I had a $2 million business, and uh, my family all had a fit because I said, the Lord told me to give it up. And so just so in case you're wondering, you know, that's all gone. That doesn't mean I had $2 million. When you have a $2 million business, it doesn't mean it's, you have $2 million. You know, it just means the business was worth that much. And then I, I um, of course, God's a creep. I mean, uh, not God's a creep. Satan's a creep. I mean, Satan's a creep. And so uh, I thought that I could live off that ministry, uh, that money from the business for a while. But uh, my partner embezzled it all. And so I had a choice. I had a choice. As I'm stepping into ministry for the first time, I have a choice to sue him. And at that time, I was just marrying Marty. I just married Marty, bless his heart, and I love him with all my heart. So I just married Marty, and I have this lawsuit, and I'm seeing a lawyer. And on the way to the lawyer at Spokane, because I was going to sue a lawyer, so anyway, it was a long story, but anyway. We went into the lawyer's office to get things going so I could get back my, you know, business and 250000 and plus the business was worth a million, um, uh, maybe a million, but it's all embezzled. And my husband, bless his heart, said, do you care about your business partners? I said, of course I do. He said, they've done wrong to you, but do you want their soul? And I said, yes, I've been witnessing to them for the whole seven years, and I would like their soul. He said, if you sue them, you won't get their soul. Now, they weren't saved, but I released them called all the lawyers and said, forget it. Then they had hard times because they'd embezzled everything, and I had lost all the money and, and the business also. But then they had hard times, and they wanted to move and relocate because their reputation was terrible. And God has <laughs> got a fancy sense of humor. He said, I want you to give them thousands of what you did save before it got embezzled so they can relocate. And I told Marty, my husband, he says, God said it, let's do it. So we gave them tons of money to relocate. But just before they left, I went back into my old office. I'm not working there anymore because I'm now doing the work of God. And when I walked in there, it's amazing how you can have hurts and walk in such love because it's, you know it's not you. You know it's not you. And without thinking, I mean, when it's natural, without thinking, I walked into the, I hadn't seen him for months. I mailed the check to him. 
you know, I didn't, I hadn't seen them in months since they did all this bad stuff. I walked in and without thinking, I ran up to him and hugged them both. A genuine hug. Oh, I'm so nice to see you. And my secretaries were all there. And anyway, they said, we can't believe you've done this. Why did you do this? We would have been disasterized forever. I said, because I love God. Because God is merciful. And God is kind. And God forgave me of all the things I've ever done in my life. Who am I to hold you in bondage when God has set me free? So I, I want you to know you're free from anything. And I'm, there's no, no, no feelings of hurt, rejection. It's going to be fine. God will take care of me. They both started crying. Can we accept this Jesus that you know? Can we accept this Jesus that we, you know? I said, you can. So we hadn't gone in the office. We prayed right in the foyer. And they both accepted Jesus. And then I hugged on them some more. And, and anyway, my secretary is over here that uh, I witnessed to for the whole seven years I had this corporation. When I turned, they were crying. They go, we know the whole situation. Follow us to the back of the warehouse. I had a huge building. You would have loved my building. <laughs> my building's like three times this building. But anyway, so that's what I, I lost, though. But anyway, so they take me through the warehouse and way behind the stage where I do rallies. And uh, I said, what is it? What is it? They go, we're way back here. I said, we're in a closet behind the stage. And they go, we want to pray. We want this Jesus that we have heard about. And we've seen how you live for the last seven years. And now even though you're out preaching, we see God in you. That's what God wants from us. And there's a shift. And the shift is in the heart. The shift is in the heart. And God wants our heart. He wants our heart. And God spoke to me prophetically when I wrote this book. I wrote this book. I think this is the last book I wrote. Well, it's not the last book I wrote, but I know this is going to sound crazy when I say this to you. But after I get through with the book, because with my dyslexia and all the things, and uh, every time I get through with a book, I go like this. Dear God, please, please, I don't want to do any more books. I don't want to do any more books. So that was the last one, and then another book came. But anyway, <laughs> but I also want to obey God. And so God spoke to me. This book's only been out maybe a year. He said, my glory is going to cover the earth. And my glory, my glory is going to be through my people. And that's what, if you really listen to the prophetic word that was said this morning, and the prophetic word that's being said all across the country. God's going to have a revival that is going to magnitude any revival. It's going to make Azusa Street and any of the revivals in the past look very mediocre. God is going to have a latter rain. And the early rain, if you study the word out, was mediocre. That's what it means, just ha-ha. Huh -huh. And if at the book of Acts was just ha-ha, huh -huh, and Peter's shadow healed everybody that, that was where his shadow was, then the latter rain, if that was just mediocre, wow. that people will fall, uh, well, Peter's, well, Paul's preaching, fall out of the balcony and, and you raise them to the dead, from the dead. I mean, I have had the privilege of raising two people from the dead, which scared me absolutely. I mean, I'm telling you, I was petrified. And, and some of my books have. One was my son. In fact, I'll just share the story. And, uh, but you need to get this book. And you need to study it because it talks to you on how to stay so that you're constantly walking in the glory, no matter what's going on around you. Even if an atomic bomb hit, you're going to still walk in peace and in the glory because you have learned how to be in the glory present. So this can be, you can order it here. You can order it on Amazon. You can download it on Amazon. You can go to my bookstore. And there's all kinds of resources. Because God wants each and every one of us to walk in the book of Acts. So you see, Acts did not stop 
with the last chapter in the book of Acts. So every single one of us can walk in our own book of Acts. And God is saying, the book of Acts never got completed. It's not completed. It doesn't end with the last chapter. You might start another chapter and another chapter and another chapter because each and every one of us can walk in our own book of Acts because you're going to reach the multitudes and the multitudes with the power and the anointing of God. Because God spoke to me that the glory of God is going to cover the earth. And who is his glory? You are his glory. But you need to know how to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, how to walk in the book of Acts, and live in the book of Acts, and expect miracles everywhere you go. And each region is going to have miracles and miracles and miracles and miracles that are going to reach and reach and reach. Because God gave me a vision. It's actually on, on Facebook right now. We just did it the other day because the Lord told me to put it on. I saw a tsunami. I saw a tsunami. Now, we're not talking about um, a vision, I mean a dream. It was a vision that happened to me while I was preaching in a huge church. Praise and worship had just got done. I was standing on the platform, all of a sudden, open vision. Open vision, I mean, not, not a dream. The whole sky opened up, and this vision was so horrifying. And I saw this tsunami coming from... The West, just want to let you know, you're in the West, you know. So this tsunami came from the West and came over the whole United States. Huge tsunami. And I saw people underneath, uh, I saw people's body parts floating around in the water and debris and things bad and bumping into things. I saw also down there some mighty men of God that if I said their names, you would know who they are. That Lord told me never to say who they are. In fact, when, I, when the vision was through and I thought on it, and so what happened, I fell out under the power of God with a, a couple hundred people waiting for me to preach. So I'm on the floor, and the vision keeps going. And so the pastor's like, what's going on with our evangelist? She's like on the floor and uh, screaming. So then when I got through with the vision, I showed it to the whole church. But... The Lord showed me that their people were under this debris and even some mighty men and people that we would know. And it was disaster, just disaster. And then all of a sudden, I know it's going to sound strange, but all of a sudden I saw these, the church, God's bride to be, getting stronger. And they floated up to the top. And they were grabbing boards and surfboards and boards and different things. And they were getting up and they were getting stronger. And stronger and stronger until they were walking on the waves. Now, the waves were still there, and the storm was still there, but they were walking on the waves, surfing on the waves. And then this beautiful church, this army of God that we have had the prophetic word this morning, this army of God started reaching down and pulling people up and restoring people and raising them from the dead and going into mental wards and stuff like that and just saying, Jesus, and that whole hospital comes to their senses. You don't understand the revival that God's going to do. One Peter got up and preached one message on the day of Pentecost, and 3,000 people got saved. A couple of days later, at the Gate Beautiful, one miracle, one miracle that everybody knew the man was crippled for years, brought 5,000 more. Will you, are you ready? Are you ready for 3,000 to get saved, 5,000 to get saved, then 10,000, then the whole city, all of this whole area, all of the region? I'm telling you, it's going to be the greatest revival that the world has ever seen, and it's not going to be just in America. And I love what God told me after I saw this vision. He said, no man and no woman and no minister is going to get credit for this one. They're not going to say it started in... I'm sorry, Pastor. Just going to let you know. Is I'm not going to say it started in Post Falls. They're not going to say it started in Toronto. It started here. No, no, at Brownsville. No, because this is going to happen all across the world at the exact same time, worldwide. So you're going to walk in His glory because He will. He said Isaiah 60. He said, arise and shine. Darkness will come. That's why I saw the storm. But in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the debris, in fact, you said it this morning, 
Don't worry. God will take care of you. Amen. You will not. The, riches, the righteous will not be forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. You do not know to have to worry. If God has to have birds flying around bringing us food, he will. Amen. We're going to walk in a realm of the supernatural that we've never been at. So you better get ready for some things to change radically. And you better get as much as you can, and you be in the word and read literature and just be ready for what's coming. Because God's doing something new. You see, we're not going out of wimpy church. Just want you to know. My, my Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. And you know what? We have the power and we have the authority and the devil's going to be locked up forever and ever and ever and his demons and the Antichrist. So you know what? We know. I was witnessing in a park one time and uh, these two kids, I went up to these two kids. I teach people evangelism and then take them out in the parks and take them door to door. And I, I do all that. I still do outreaches because I still got a lot of evangelism in me. But um, so I started witnessing to them. And as soon as I turned to witness to the one boy and said, Jesus, do you guys know who Jesus is? He just freaked out on me. He just screamed at the top of his voice and demons are starting to manifest, which I knew. But he took off running through the park. It was a Kittawake Park um, down on Columbia River. So I'm running after him as fast as I can to, uh, because I know he's got a demon and I knew that the demon when I said Jesus made him start running. So I'm running after him and running after him anyway. I never did catch up with him because he could run faster than me. And I'm all out of breath so I go back to where his friend is. And I said, I have to find, I said, you have to give me this young man. He was like maybe 15. I said, you have to give me this young man's um, Phone number. I have to call and talk to his mother and father. He, he has problems. Well, I don't want to scare this guy. He says, he said, I said, what are you two into? He said, we're into Satan worship. He said, we have seances in the, his bedroom all the time, and we call on Satan. And I says, you do? He says, yeah, but don't worry. He said, I got this figured out. This is the other one, not the one that ran off. I said, um, what do you mean you got figured out? He said, well, I figured that if Satan was really powerful... I wondered how powerful he was because somebody had witnessed to him and said, you're on the wrong side. He said, so I thought, I'm on the wrong side. He said, here's a satanic man, okay, satanic man, young boy. I think he was 15 or 16. You see, when God's in something, you're going to have revival. I mean, revival. God will start speaking and visiting to people, people that are mean, people that are into antichrist things, people that are into Satanism, people that are drug addicts. God can do one little vision. I mean, you think God isn't going to work with us? The Holy Spirit works with us and gives people visions and things start happening. So he says, yeah, I don't know what got into me. He said, well, we've been worshiping Satan and having seances. He said, then I thought, I wonder what the other side's like. He says, so I went down to a Bible bookstore and bought a Bible. He said, and, I, and, and young people, this is how you're going to get the young people too. Yeah, you're going to get the young people. You know, just put a big sign out there. You want to know about 666, six, six, they'll all be here. <laughs> no, they're, 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 the young people are curious about the end times. They want to see the glory. They want to see moves of God. They're tired. You know, you start having miracles with young people. They'll get the word out faster than you can. So anyway, uh, he says, yes. Yeah. So I got this Bible at the Bible bookstore. And he said, and I read the back of it. I said, what do you mean? He says, yeah. He said, I said, oh, my God. Oh, my, he said, oh, I couldn't believe what I read. It says that the Satan and the false prophet and the Antichrist are going to go in a pit of fire and gonna burn forever and ever and ever. And I, he says, I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> he says, so I'm trying to figure out how, how do I get on the other side? I said, well, I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> so I sat down with him on a park bench, and a few hours later, he's saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues. I called the number. He, did, he finally broke down and gave me the number of the one that ran off. I called and called that number to try to talk to the parents. They, I just left answering machine, answering machine messages. When I finally got a hold of them, they, I said, I need to talk to your son. They said, he's in a mental ward. 
Now, I didn't want to tell him that because of what I did, he ended up in the mental ward, but um, it had nothing to do with me. What happened is when I said Jesus, the power of Jesus, the devil overtook him, and they had to put him in a mental ward. And I said to the parents over and over, I can come. I can take care of this. I know how to do this, and he can be set free. And I called several times to see if they'd let me know where he was. And they said, if you call our house one more time and talk about all this Jesus stuff, he said, I'm going to call the police and have you arrested. And I said, did you know they were doing seances in the bedroom and this and that? He goes, yeah, it's just kid stuff. So people don't realize how bad things are. And we have a whole generation and toys that are demonic and video games that are totally demonic and uh, Pokemon cards that are totally demonic, and TV shows that are doing everything they can to get us to ch uh, the children to become lesbians, homosexuals, transgenders, uh, disobey their parents. It's in the cartoons. It's in everything. Because we're living in the last days, and Jesus is coming soon. And with, even with the hurricanes and the earthquakes and everything, Jesus is coming very very, very soon. So you don't have years to get ready. You better get ready now. And if you're really hearing for the voice of God, you're hearing God say, get up and pray. Seek God. Do some fasting. Get in the word. Get in the word. Get in the word. Now, you've been in a school of the supernatural, and I've been talking to you all week. And God is putting it on my heart to do more of the schools of the supernatural. Now, for seven years, I'm just going to tell you, be, because God had to spank me. So seven years, this is my first school. I stopped doing them. I got so upset, so hurt, because I, I, I would rent a hall and hire musicians and hire catchers, and two people would show up, five people show up. Time after time after time, and I said, I'm not going to do these no more. I said, do you hear? I didn't hear God say. Well, when I came here, it started, I got spanked. God said, I never told you to stop your schools. My church now is hungry. They're hungry. They're like little birds going, somebody feed me. Somebody feed me. I want to know about the supernatural. I want to know. Because a lot of churches that I used to preach in all went seeker friendly. Well, Sister Joan, you're too radical in the Holy Spirit, so we don't want to have you anymore. I go, but your son got healed. I mean, one of the services that don't have me anymore, a man was crippled from one end to the other, and I was at the book table, and all of a sudden, I, I just looked up at him because he was actually playing the keyboard so he didn't get in the prayer line. And while I looked up at him, the Holy Spirit showed me every, I was like I could see through his body. I don't know how to explain that, but I could see through his body and see everywhere that his bones were all. And he, and he said, he was saying, I can't pick up my children. I can't even hold my baby. I have a newborn baby, and I can't even hold my newborn baby. And all of a sudden, I just reached over. He didn't fall out under the parrot. I just reached over, took his hand, and all of a sudden, and Marty was there too. You heard pop, 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 grind, grind, pop, pop. He started screaming. He came with me to churches all over Florida and talked about how total immediately healed. So we need to walk in the supernatural so God told me to start doing these schools again. So I'm doing one here, one in two weeks, and God's going to get all the glory. Because people are ready. They're ready. They're ready. They're ready. They're ready. And so for those of you that have been at the school, you're going to be getting certificates tonight. And I want to thank you. Because I said, Lord, I said, Lord, I don't want to do no more schools with three or four people. So by faith, I ordered 100 books. Now, you didn't use all 100 of them, but that's okay. I think we had a pretty good turnout, and I'm very, very, very pleased. I'm very thankful that you came out. And it's not about people and numbers. It's It's 
It's about people being saved and people being healed and lives being changed. You see, as an evangelist, I would hold mothers in my arms because their son died from an overdose. And I remember when I was in East L.A., they asked me if I'd come down to the Bloods and the Crips. And I said, yes. They asked me to come down, so we set up a huge platform, almost as half the church size. And we went into the projects. And they said, Joan, you're going in some places that you're going to get killed. I said, I am not getting killed, and I want you to reverse those words. I have angels on assignment. I have, I mean, when I first got saved, what you're saying about angels? When I first got saved and moved to Kennewick, I wasn't there very long, and I was driving. I was still Catholic. I just got saved, but I hadn't quite left the Catholic church, so I'd go to Pentecostal church on Sunday. It took a while, and the Lord had to pull me out of it. Uh, anyway, these angels showed up in my car. They were huge, almost like 13, 14 feet. And he was like crunched in my car. I know this sounds crazy, but he was crunched in my car like this. And he had another smaller angel that must have been nine or ten feet. He must have been on training or something. But because I don't know how it works. But anyway, all I know is from my Catholic background, I know that somehow in my head I got that the angels come and take you to heaven, which I believe they do. So when I saw the two angels in my car, and I'll, the only way I can explain how I saw the angels is like, beam me up, spotty. Um, that's it, because they were like translucent. I could see through them. They had a form just like a body and everything. And uh, they scared me so bad that I said, go away, go away, go away, go away, go away. And, and here it is like 40 years later, and I'm saying, I wish I would have found out what they wanted. But see, I know this. They're right here. They're right here. I've had many, many services where my angels show up, and my angel might be right there. And the Lord will tell me, you don't have to pray for anybody. So when, I, when the Lord shows me my angel right here, when the people need prayer, I just go walk over here. As soon as they hit that spot, <laughs> until five or six are on top of each other, because it was just. <laughs> I do know that angels work with me. And they work with you. So usually how I pray before I preach is this. Father, I just come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you're here in the midst of us, that where you two or more are gathered, you're here. You're here, right here. You're here to do the same yesterday, today, and forever like you always do. So this morning, there's people that need healing, touching, uh, touch from heaven. Maybe they need filling of the Holy Spirit. Maybe they need sickness to leave their body, deliverance. Whatever they need, God, you're here to do it. And I thank you. Holy Spirit, get Joan Pierce out of the way and let me only do and say what you would have me say. Angels, you do what you're supposed to do because you're supposed to work with me, the heir of salvation. You do what I can't do. I'll do what the Holy Spirit tells me to do. And everything that's done this morning, will all glory goes to you, almighty God, in Jesus' name. So those of you that had workbooks, I'm going to teach a little lot long because I want to pray for everybody. So uh, if you have a workbook, 42, page 42, for those of you that don't, because a lot of you weren't here to, for the school, it, you should get your Bibles out. You should have Bibles. Now, I don't know about people that don't carry Bibles, but anyway, so, but I, I know a lot of people don't carry Bibles because their Bibles are in their phone, and I'm so thankful that my Bibles are on my phone because I'm in my Bible, on, on, and at nighttime, I put the word on while I'm sleeping, and and then I wake up and I'm on top of the iPad and I'm uh, slobbering on my phone or whatever because I put the word on. It's usually on all the time. And praise tapes too. Okay, so, uh, so for those of you, Luke 4. There's a very important little session. Okay, Luke 4. It says in, in verse 1. And Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned. He just got baptized by John the Baptist, okay? And Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, returned to the Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, and being tempted 40 days by the devil. And in those days, he ate nothing, and afterward, he's hungry. I want you to know the devil is going to try to fight this revival. The devil's going to fight and try to pull out all stops for this revival that's coming.
So you better learn how to do spiritual warfare and know how to be prayed up at all times because you don't know when God's going to use you to lead somebody to the Lord or pray for the sick or when something's going to happen that a demon manifests in your face. You never know. So you need to be ready. And when the devil said to him, he waits till you're weak. He waits till you're tired. He's, he's not going to attack you when you're on fire for God. He's going to attack you right after you've done a big event, like after a tent meeting. Used to after our tent meetings and all these people would get saved and saved and saved, then, then it would be attacked. Not anymore. No, 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 no. I don't let the devil attack me. He used to attack me when I got started. As soon as I get through pre preaching, it was like, you didn't say that right. You didn't do that right. You didn't do this right. And finally, I said, shut up, devil. You're such a liar anyway. Why would I listen to a liar? Why would you listen to a liar? And then I said to God, you know, say, God, I'm not a good preacher. I don't even probably know how to preach. I don't even know how to put sermons together. In fact, I didn't know how to put sermons together that when I went to Bible college, they had a class called hermeneutics, which is how to put sermons together. I did one message from hermeneutics. My pastor and two of the stu uh, teachers had been with me on the mission field and knew how I preached. They called me into the dean, and they go, you're getting an A in hermeneutics. Actually, it was the only A I got in the Bible college, so it was only. <laughs> oh, and they gave me an A in he hermeneutics because so they said, we don't want to do anything. Uh, we don't want you to take hermeneutics. I said, well, uh, am I doing it wrong? I read the book. I did it the way the book says. And they said, no, you didn't do it wrong. You did it right. It was the worst preaching you've ever preached. <laughs> but you did it according to the book. You have a unique way of ministering, and we don't want to mess what God's put in you, so we don't want you to have a year of hermeneutics. So you get an A, and when that class is on, you can go sit in the office and pray or something. <laughs> so you have to be you. So all I say to God is, and you have to do what I'm saying, all of you. Whatever I have, God, whatever t talents or gifts you've given me, use them for your glory. Use me that people be saved, healed, delivered. Use me, God, for the gifts. That's why we, uh, Pastor Tim talked. There's so many different gifts, and a minister can't do it. I need somebody to be a prayer warrior. I, I, I believe me. I don't even know how to spell. Some of you had me write in your books. I have no idea what words there were, but you figure it out. But... <laughs> But so he waits and hits you at the very last minute. And Jesus answers and says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him to a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms in one moment. And the devil said to him, if you, I give you all authority, I will give to you their glory and deliver unto me. And he, the devil's trying to say, if you'll worship me, now, I want you to know, devil's creep, a creep. Do you know a lot of famous movie stars, rock stars, sold their soul out to the devil? And then the devil helps them get famous and rich. But gee, what a price to pay. You know, you're only going to be happy here for however long. You can be world, world famous. Um, there was a rock star, some kind of acid rock star. I don't listen to that stuff. I, I didn't like it. I liked Elvis. Okay, you can tell when I was born. But anyway, by that. But anyway. Um, you know, but one was being interviewed. Now, I've never heard a, a secular news channel do this. My husband heard it. I never saw it, but my husband saw it. He said, I can't believe it because it broke my husband's heart. So here's this demonic rock star being interviewed by the, the anchor man, and the anchor man, clear out of the blue, says, have you ever thought of wanting to go to heaven? Do you want to go to heaven? And Marty says, never have you heard an anchor man say that. Never. In fact, we've never heard it. But that day, do you want to go to heaven? And the man answered this. Now, why would I want to go to heaven when all my friends and everybody I know is going to be in hell and I'm going to go to hell and have a party? He died three days later. So we have a world that needs to be reached. And the only way we're going to reach it is through the power and the anointing of God. So the devil's going to try to trip you up. But he, Jesus just said, get away. And he used the word of God. 
He didn't say you don't have power to, to say this. The truth is that Satan did have dominion of the earth because it was given to him in the garden. That's why Jesus came to earth. He came to redeem us from the fall. He came to reestablish, recreate, join us, joint heirs. That's why he had to have a new covenant in the blood and the covenant that he has made us all joint heirs. And we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And everything Jesus did, we can do. So if Jesus did walk on the water, we can walk on the water. If Jesus raised the dead, we can raise the dead. Because he's given us all power. And you start doing that. You know, if you see somebody at a coffin, just go ahead and try it. I mean, so people will think you're nuts, but so ahead, go ahead and try it. Come out of that coffin. No, go ahead and try it. Your people might laugh at you, but who cares? God's going to see your heart. And you keep pressing in, and pretty soon one day, I mean, when my son, I'll tell this. I think I've shared this story here before, haven't I? No? No? My son was a rebellious son. And I came home from a New Year's night. We have all night prayer in our church, all night prayer. And we usually at 7 in the morning, then we all go have breakfast, and I get home 10. But that, that New Year's, we only prayed till 3 or 2. Must have been 2. And we said, this is not a good time to go to the restaurants to eat because everybody in the bars. But we couldn't pray anymore. It was like, so I went home. As I'm driving up to my house in Kennewick, I noticed a lot of cars all over the road, all over the place. And I was like, somebody's having a party. And as I got closer and saw my lights in the house and all the driveway, all the cars in my driveway, and I said, hmm, it looks like I'm having a party. <laughs> so I went in my house, and oh my god, what a mess. And uh, girls everywhere, naked girls, boys in the rooms, and all in different rooms. And, and uh, I mean, I'm kind of a gutsy person, so I went in, and my sons, they're both of my sons, actually. I grabbed my son, Alan, and my son, Rob. You get these girls out of this house right now. You, and I started going from room to room. You know, get out of here. Get out of my house right now. I mean, some, you know, anyway, I wasn't being very nice. I says, get these girls and get them out of the house. They're half naked. And, and so my boys, I don't know, they're drunk. So they just started pulling them and going down the stairs. It's thump, 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 thump. But anyway, they all got out. So I told my son, you know what? I am, as, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. So you're going to have to either change your lifestyle because I'm not going to allow this or you're going to have to go get your own place. So he did. He went and got his own place. Anyway, a few months goes by, he's got his own place, three roommates or something like that, no, two roommates and him. I get a call in the middle of the night, three in the morning. I had company there from my business at that time. I get a call, Alan's dead, hurry. I just slipped some clothes on quick and I got in my car, started driving down to him. And the first thing that came, I mean, you don't know what's in you, you see, until there's something happens. But if you haven't put nothing in you, nothing's going to come out of you. So God's going to have us doing some strange things in the next few years, and he's going to cause this great wave of God's glory to manifest, and you're going to be able to go in a bar and see the whole bar get saved. I'm telling you, God's going to be asking you to do some things, but they're going to be great. And you better know how to hear God and not be doing it just because you think it's a nice thing to do. You better know that you know that God said it. So I'm, I, on the way driving down, I started prophesying. This just came out of me. Live, Alan, live. You shall not die. You shall glorify. And then I said, God, you promised me in my household. And I'm prophesying, prophesying, prophesying all the way down to his apartment. When I got down to the, his apartment, policemen were there because the, they had called the policemen. And the policemen were in the parking lot trying to find his apartment. And I says, follow me. So we went into the apartment at the same time. There's my son dead on the floor. And the teenagers are yelling at me and the policemen are talking to me. And I just stood there over my son's body. And I looked at the two policemen and the two other teenagers. I said, shut up. I need to hear God. And I walked in the hallway of the apartment, and I said, God, I don't know what to do. And I heard God speak. And I'm not talking here. I heard it like thunder, lightning, here. 
go in, turn your son over. I'll never forget what I heard. Go in, turn your son over, pray, and put your hands in the middle of his back. He'll be up and fine by noon. So I walked back in. I said, roll my son over. The two teenagers said, nope. Policeman said, we can't touch him. There's people coming to take his body. I said, he's my son. I said, roll him over now. And those teenagers, the policemen wouldn't touch him, but the police, they rolled him over. I knelt down over my son's body. He's face down now. I looked up at the policemen and the two teenagers and said, I don't know if you believe in God. Or not but I'm going to pray I close my eyes my my son's actually stiff I don't know how to explain it but his body's stiff stiff so I don't know when this happened so he's stiff I put my hands and I started praying in tongues I started praying in tongues and then the Holy Spirit told me to touch him so I prayed in tongues and then I put my hands right in the middle of his back and and when the Holy Spirit do it I did it boom like that and when I did his whole body went boom boom I mean, step up. The Lord said, do it again. Boom, boom. It was just like as if you had those paddles that you went like that, and their body jumped. And then I said, roll them over. They rolled them over. I got down like this. My son's eyes all of a sudden just went. He opened his eyes. I said, tell him to call me at noon. I'm going home. The policeman said, what do you think you're doing? I said, I'm going home. They said, what? I said, no, oh, I'm going home. He was dead. And he came to life. Because you need to know what's in you. Because you don't know when it's going to come out of you. So you can't let the devil start using you up and stuff like that. So this is what God says. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit in life of Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For that the law could not do in what was weak through the flesh, but God sent his, sent his Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who, li who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who, who live according to the spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, set their things of the spirit for the carnal mind is death but the spiritual mind is life and peace because the carnal mind is an enemy against God and is not subject to the laws of God nor indeed can it be so then those who are of the flesh cannot please God but you are not of the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's not his. Amen. You need to learn to walk in the spirit. I mean, one of the books I did not even, of course, I didn't promote it because I only have two of them on the book table, is the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need to learn how to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. For, for, it goes to the next page for those of you that had your workbooks. Verse 14, Romans 8:14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by which you cry, Abba, Father. And the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. So as many as are led by the Spirit of God, and God is saying to all of us, you better know how to hear the Holy Spirit. That's what this whole week's been about. You better know how to walk in the miracles. You better know how to lead people to the Lord. You better know how to cast out devils. You better seek yourself to God. You lock yourself in your closet. If you have to lock yourself in your closet for days 
and cry out to God, say, I want to be ready. Do you want to be ready? I mean, I have had this chit chat with God, okay? Years ago, almost 30 years ago, he gave me a five hour vision of entire cities coming to Christ. And he gave me the blueprint. And I went to several pastors and tried to get them to do it. And they all said, in fact, one of them in New York says, we just had Rodney Howard here. He, he wants to do the same thing. I says, I showed him the whole vision, spent an hour with him. He says, he said, I don't know, Joan. You can't get the pastors to do this. He said, it won't happen. And I just, I mean, I can offend people. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can. And I said, you know what? Your God's too little. My God can take entire cities, entire nations, and my God will do it. Amen. He will. Yeah. And so I have this talk with God. I'm going to be 80 years old next year. And I have this talk with God. I'm not going nowhere till I see it happen. And I'm going to be part of it. And I'm not going home, and I'm not dying until I see this vision that you gave me seven years ago. And then he told me, it's not your vision. I went. That's true. He says, so your job isn't always to do it all. Your job is to share the vision. I have a manuscript this big, how to do Colosseum meetings. I'll give you a nutshell of how, how this is, OK? Just a nutshell. You can go on my website, look. See, everybody wants these huge Colosseums to have some big name come in and do all of it, OK? That's the truth. We have it set to do a Colosseum meeting, too. But we go into a city, and we meet all the pastors, and we zone off areas all over town for prayer, fasting, and seeking God. And then we schedule like 300 or 400 or 500 outreaches. Outreaches, outreaches, all kinds of outreaches, youth, grown-ups, everything. Hundreds of outreaches over a whole city area. Now, I know what you said now. Remember what you said early? The logo, if you go to my website, that God gave me is now's the time for Jesus. That's what it is. He showed me billboards, flyers, that before you launch it off, you have a mailing out that goes out just before the Colosseum and just before the outreaches, that a mail out goes to every house in the entire city region telling them about Jesus. Not then all the commercials are now's the time for Jesus. And we had, I mean, I have I have it all on blue pen, but haven't I didn't go on with some of the stuff because we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars maybe a million dollars or two, three, five million dollars to do this plan, okay? So I had to break it down bite size because the pastors could not swallow it. I'm sorry. But see, now, okay, are you ready? I'm going to say something. Now, out of necessity, when things go bad, they're going to have to join together, just like the airlines join together, the banks are joined together. The world knows how to do it better than us. But the churches will have to join together if they're going to make it. So it won't be no man, one man thing. And then we have commercials that as soon as we launch, we keep everything hush hush. As soon as we launch, billboards clear across the United States. All of a sudden, you have commercials, heaven and hell, um, flames of fire, where will you go, and then billboards. Billboards. I have them all designed. You stick them in your yard, the mail goes out, and everybody in town that's a Christian puts one in their yard, and they are being blasted with Jesus, 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 and revival comes. Anyway, I'm still waiting. So, but I was, that wasn't me that wrote it. In fact, one doctor that uh, actually, a man that's a doctorate, doctorate extreme high, he, he, he asked, can I take your manuscript home and look at it? And it's this thick. And he came back and he says, Sister Joan, I just want to say something to you. I've known you for a few years. 
And I don't want to hurt your feelings, honey. But I know that you are not smart enough to do this manuscript. I said, no, I'm not. But the Holy Spirit is. All God's looking for is people that have a heart after God. There's one scripture the Holy Spirit says, you forgot a scripture that's very important. And I said, okay, well, we're, let me find it. Musicians, please come up. It must be on this page. This is the last page of the book. Well, anyway, I can't find it, so. Oh, no. Wait a second. I got to do this. The Lord's telling me I have to do it. So I have to find it. Oh, there it is. Luke 4, 18. When Jesus came into the synagogue, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, to restore sight to the blind, and to preach and proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And when he closed the book and he sat down, he said, this scripture is about me. And they tried to kill him. I'm just telling you, you better be prayed up. And we've all been sent out. And this whole week is saying, and I'm telling you, mark my word, I'm speaking as a prophet right now. Don't take this week lightly, please. Please do not take this week lightly. I know what's going to happen real quick. I know what's coming real quick. Don't put it off. Get ready. I am being dead serious. I don't want to see you as a statistic. I don't want to see you as falling off and a great falling away will come before the great and awesome day of the Lord. And I don't want to see any of you falling back but the main reason I do these goals is because there's so many people that are hurting there's so many families that don't know what to do there's people only taking half a pill because they can't afford it there's people that are eating dog food because they can't afford groceries there's people that are losing family members marriage is falling apart their children are on drugs or they're on drugs believe me when I say this when people come off a high they go, oh God I don't want to do this but the devil has them bound wake up sleepy church wake up sleepy church wake up there's people everywhere you go when you're getting your nails done when you're pumping gas everywhere and tonight, I'm going to put tools in your hands and teach you how to lead people to Christ, how to witness to Christ, and how to lead people into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, I'm going to put tools in your hand so you can become evangelists to bring in this harvest that God is bringing in. Father, we just thank you, Almighty God. God, our Lord, Shatana Mako, Shititi, Allah, Shatana Mako. It's Siti and Lambaha. Go ahead and lead us in a song as I wait on the Holy Spirit. Ikula Ramaha, Shatana Mako, Shodam. That's in the Ramashota, Ramashota, Baba Bashi, Erabo Shotora Maka, Shatana Ramako, Kashidi, Allah, Namako, Namashi. And as we're singing, I want the first three rows in this middle section. Just this section right here. First three rows in this section. This section and this section to come up to get prayed for. Also, if you have kids here, just uh, 
I'm going to pray get for them all the after, children. Yeah, get them out. We're going to have the kids prayed for too. So um, don't, don't rush off with them. Just yeah, we're going to pray for your children. And, yeah, we want to pray for them. All the way so. across. Go across. All the way across. First three rows in these two the middle sections. Just the first up. three rows. We're going to push these chairs back right here. First three rows. And if you're seated, if you're seated in a light blue chair on the edge right here, grab your things and start stacking the chairs Everybody against the wall. Everybody else, your hands okay. out and pray. Stack the chairs against the wall. Put your hands grab up your stuff and stack the chairs. Put your hands up to the Lord. Against the wall. Put your eyes on Jesus. Okay. Are you light ready to chairs. be an army for God? Are you ready to be a warrior for God? Are you ready to go set the captives free? The blind can see, the lame can walk, the deaf can hear, the lost can be saved, the addictions can be gone. Are you ready to be used mightily of God? It's your time, and God is saying it's time, now, time, now, it's now, it's now, it's not two months from now, seven months from now. God wants to energize you and send you out as a, into the harvest. Put your hands up to the Lord. Say, Father, here am I, send me, that people will be saved, healed and delivered. Have your way. Get anything in me that's not of you. Take it out. I die to self this day. I die to self. I surrender to you. Almighty God, I surrender. Be ready. Ushers, come up here quick. Quick, ushers, come up. Hurry, hurry. Ushers, be ready. I need a few more ushers. Fire of God. Fire of God. Ketchup, ketchup. Fire of God. I need catchers. Fire of God. Fire. Let some ladies do that. Pastor, there needs to be ladies. I don't want pastors putting claws on people. Somebody else can do that, not the pastor. Fire! Fire! Fire of God! Fire! Fire! Fire of God! Fire! Fire! Push it, Mama. Much more for you to do, sir. Much more. You're not done. You're not done. You got, you, you got wisdom in you, and God's going to restore you, and you're going to be, people are going to know you all across the world. Push it, Mama. Fire! Fire of God. Fire! Fire, catcher. Push it, Fire! Fire, more. Fire of God. Fire. Fire. More, 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 more. More. This section over here, anyone on this side that wants to be prayed for, just find a place, starting up the wall, going through. Koshi, anyone on this side that wants to get prayed for, just make a line across the front. If there's somebody on the floor, just kind of scoot over beside them. Just all the way across. There's room. There's room. Come on, one line over this way. Come on, some ushers be helping me put them in line all the way across. Go all the way over there. All the way to that lady, way down there. Go on, all the way across. One line. Keep going. All the way down. Keep them going. Anyone else in this section that wants to be prayed for, come on up. Anyone else in this section that wants to be prayed for, come on up. Bullshit. Anyone in this section or that section, come on up. Scoot up here as far as you can. Anyone in this section that wants to be prayed for, come on up. Here. I'll pray for that section in a minute. Come on up. Put your hands up to the Lord so I know who I'm praying for. 
Scoot up to me as close as you can. Come on, everybody, put your hands up if you're going to get prayed for. Say, Father, I'm ready. I'm ready to be used. Pour your anointing and your fire on me. Do what you have to. Break me. Remake me. Let me be a vessel for your glory. Fire. 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 Fire of God and heal his body. Fire. 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 More, more. Fire. Fire of God. Finish healing her body. Fire of God. Fire. Fire. If you need a healing, just receive. Fire. Fire. More, Holy Spirit. More, 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 more. And touch your body. Healing. I see healing going through your body. Who, 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 More, more. You're being healed right now. You're being healed right now. Receive it. Healing, healing is yours. Healing right now. God's all over you. God's all over you. God's all over you. My angels are touching you now. Anyone else that wants to be prayed for, come on up. If you find room, Jesus, 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 Jesus. There it is. Jesus. Somebody get behind him. Jesus. Jesus, more. Jesus, more. Anyone else that wants to be prayed for, just line up. Healing. Deaf ears be open. By the power of God, fire of God, to use you for your glory. There it is. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Whatever you need from God, receive it. There. Fire. More. More, God. Come on. Come on. Put your hands up to the Lord. Fire of God. Fire, fire. Julie, come over on this side. Julie, push a fire, God. Push it to the Push it to the fire. Fire of God. Fire. Fire. Push it up, go. Shut down, I'm going to go. But I see the other. Shut the door. Push it down, I'm going to go. But I see the other. I'm going to go. Shut the other, I'm going to go. But I see the other, I'm going to go. Jesus. Bring the children out. Fire of God. Fire. That's going to use you two to minister. Your ministers. Pastor, you're going to tutor these two people up to be ministers. Full time. They're going to grow up and be full. I mean, not that they're not grown up, but you're going to train them up to be full time ministers. Are they already ministers? No. Well, they will be. In some ways. Well, it's going to go bigger and bigger. Bring the children out. Everybody stretch your hands to these little ones. Stretch your hands all the way across. All the way across. All the way across. Look at the new army coming. All the way across. Go ahead. Somebody stretch them down that way. Come on. Well, all the way that way. All the way. All the children. Come on. Boy, I didn't know that there was a many back there. Scoot this way. One line. Okay. Come on. One line. Make a line. One line. One line. Okay, put your hands up to the Lord. Put your hands up to the Lord. Okay, put your hands up to the Lord. Put your hands up to Jesus. Put your hands up to Jesus. One line. 
Put your hands up to Jesus. I want all of you to say, I love Jesus. Jesus in my heart. I will serve Jesus all my life. Jesus, anoint me. Use me. Protect me. Everybody stretch your hands to these children because you have no idea what they have to go through. Put your hands up to the Lord and I'm going to come and pray for you. Lord, let your anointing touch him. Let your anointing touch her. It's okay. Don't worry. You don't have to go nowhere. Go she, Father, I pray just blessings on him. I just pray blessings on him. I pray blessings on him. I don't want to scare him. I pray blessings on them. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Go shatanamako. Blessings. Blessings, blessings, blessings. For the blood of Jesus over these children. The blood of Jesus. Hedge of protection. Protect them from all harm. For, protect them from people that would try to hurt them. Protect them. Cover them with your blood. Cover them with your blood. Cover them with your blood. Little she, cover them with your blood. Cover them, Jesus, with your blood. Cover them with your blood. Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand. Let's give the Lord a hand for what he's done. Now, I want to ask a question. Hold on. <laughs> okay, hold on. All right. Is there anyone here that has a, had, had a miracle this week? Anyone here that had a miracle this week? Come up. Anyone else that wants to give a miracle testimony? Come up. One miracle in the whole week. Well, that's amazing me. I know a lot of people had miracles. I've had water in my right ear for years. The doctors just gave me some nasal spray and said it'll work. And... Uh, Joan prayed for me, and I can hear without taking any nasal spray or anything now. So, we had words about hearts, and I've had I've had a lot of pain in this heart. I couldn't tell if I was interceding for somebody else if I was really having heart issues. But I've had no pain whatsoever since we prayed. And the other thing is that I, I, got, I bought every book that Joan wrote a year ago, and I have not been able to open one book and read it. And she prayed over me last night, and I could read the book. So praise God, because God's got a word for me in there, right? <laughs> and the devil didn't ever want me to hear it. But I'm reading it, and my heart don't hurt, so I praise God. Amen. Thank you. Anyone else want to give a quick testimony? Okay, so um, when, when I came, um, I was going through a lot of things, and the Lord, um, and I still am, but the Lord uh, spoke through Joan and said that I was going through these things, but I have so, such a peace in me now that I didn't have before. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I, too, have been here this weekend and uh, Joan the Holy Spirit through Joan touched my heart and I had a lot of unforgiveness and hurt and I feel so much lighter now and I know I have great works to do for my Lord and it's freeing me up you know anybody else okay come up quick keep it real short because I'm sure it's running late So you guys probably don't know me. I'm Dawn. I came with Julie and Joan uh, from Gig Harbor, Washington. And um, so I didn't even know her powerful, amazing testimony literally until this weekend. And um, now I realize why the Lord had me come. Well, a huge part. But she had a lot of the same issues that I had, and I didn't even know it. So I was healed from a traumatic brain injury, neck and spine injury. So it really became like life or death for me to hear the Lord's voice. And I had a surgery I didn't need, and it almost cost me my life. And I'm a registered nurse, so there was a lot of medical trauma. 
And the same thing with me before I wrote my book, I couldn't even, my eyes, I couldn't read or write. I had to use a ghost writer. And uh, so my eyes have still been shaking, but I had the same problem reading uh, even. Anyway, long story short, I was just blown away because I was like, all right, you know, submit your day to the Lord. Like right when I wake up, I ask the Holy Spirit to use me every day. So long story short, I was just blown away when he gave me someone's birthday yesterday. And he specifically, there was such a timing on that. And he had me wait to the last. So you had received everything. And I didn't understand. I was like, okay, is this really for someone here? Is it online? And he's never given me a full birthday before. And I was like blown away. So he just blows me away every time I think it's good. He just does even better. And so, um, yeah, I'm just blown away with your testimony and it's brought me so much encouragement because there's sometimes you know you you still uh you deal with great suffering whether it's pain anyway um so yeah i'm excited so what she's saying is god because we taught that you need to walk in word of knowledge word of wisdom when we did that and she did come on thank you thank you I'm I'm Lorene, and this is my third time here, and um, I actually know God's goodness. I have uh, no meniscus. I have no meniscus on this because of a horrific ski accident. I've been, um, after caretaking my husband for about 16 years, he ended up um, dying suddenly about three years ago, and um, I was pretty lost without him, and uh, had been praying, God, um, just so I can... I can find my tribe, um, the last day remnant. And you can't when you're taking care of someone. It's hard to do, but he ended up going to heaven, and that was a heavenly experience. And then I said, I lived in, um, in San Clemente, California, and I said, what now? His, our handprints are all over the place. Where do I go? It's like tearing off scabs. And God said, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And I th said... I think that's near Canada. Well, <laughs> that ended up, I ended up leaving my big church, big family, just to, just because he said to come up here. He said it was a blessed place and safe place for me to come. I came for two and a half, two years I've been here now searching for my little family, my tribe, and where I could find my remnant. I've been praying to, to join for many years, and I found it last night, and God said, this is your family. This is your home. Yes. Yeah, so you got a new church family. God bless you. That neat. All right, anybody else? Going, going, go. come quick, because I want to turn it back to the pastor. Hi, uh, my name's Rick. I do events in the city of Spokane, and uh, I've been going through some things and some challenges, as we all have, and uh, in the last week, I've been all over some street ministries downtown. Um, I'm waiting on my miracle to come, but every step that I've taken and every place where I've stepped out, there have been people just coming to God everywhere, miraculous healings, money in bank accounts, um, relationships restored, and I'm just doing what God's telling me to do, and I know that he's going to have mine when the time comes and his timing, and I'm just thankful to be here. Praise the Lord. Glad you came. All right, pastor here. You can, pastor. All right. All right, well, that's... I'm going to be out there. If you buy a book, I'll write something in the book, and I'll be hanging out there for a while. Yeah, so, Lord, we give you the praise and the glory for what you're doing, not just today, but in this whole time, and that we say, just as we did earlier, we just say, we will, we will, we will go with you, we will do what you are doing, we will speak what you are saying, we will follow. We're so excited to walk with you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. As we go home, as we go to our jobs and our businesses and, and to our uh, routines and schools and all that, Lord, that we go change. We go different. We go with a, a stronger anointing on our lives because of what you're doing right now in this time, in this season, Lord. Thank you. In your name, amen. Amen, amen. amen.
So if you, if you want to, to sow into Jones Ministry, there is a basket out on the book table. You can uh, drop something in there if the Lord puts that on your heart. Blessings on you. Love you. There should be some snacks out there too if, they're still, if they still haven't gotten eaten. And uh, to go out to lunch with somebody, get to know your church family more. We'll see you next Sunday.